Hey guys, if you've been buying overpriced grow bags online or messing around with Uncle Ben's tech, it's time to upgrade. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make your own professional quality spawn bags at home. Cheaply, reliably, and with gear you can reuse. You can buy those all-in-one grow bags for 40 bucks or the bags of Uncle Ben's rice and use those to get started. I did the same thing, but long-term, it's gonna be way more cost efficient to make your own spawn bag. This method has a little bit of an upfront cost, but I'll explain why it's totally worth it in just a couple minutes. So first things first, we're gonna need a few supplies and that's where this initial upfront cost comes from. What we're gonna need is obviously some sort of grain for this video, I'm gonna be using whole oats. We're going to need bags with a micropore filter, some adhesive self-healing injection ports, a pot of some sort, a strainer or mesh screen, an impulse sealer, and a pressure cooker. I'll link all these supplies down below. You can get most of them cheap on Amazon. The grain is best picked up locally if you guys have a tractor supply or maybe just like a horse feed store somewhere near you. Like I said, for this video, I'm gonna be using whole oats, sometimes called whole oat groats, or even recleaned oats. The type of grain spawn that you use is hugely dependent on what kind of mushrooms you're trying to grow. Lion's mane, for instance, does really well with millet. Shiitake mushrooms, on the other hand, do better with rye berries. But I happen to get my hands on some really cheap whole oats, and so that's what I'm using. Use whatever you have available to you. We're going to keep this simple and repeatable, stress-free. We're eyeballing a lot here and it's gonna work just fine. So we're gonna start with our pot and fill it about a third of the way with our grain of choice. Some people choose to soak their oats for 12 to 24 hours to reduce endospores and improve sterilization, blah, blah, blah. Personally, I think it's unnecessary, but if you wanna go ahead and soak your oats, I'm not gonna stop you and it's probably not gonna do you any harm. So whether you're soaking or not, we're gonna fill the pot up nearly fully with water. Make sure you leave about an inch or two for any boils or expanding that we encounter. Boils or expanding? <laughs> fill it up almost fully, leave a little bit of room. If you're choosing to soak your grains, I'll see you in 12 hours. And if not, let's move on to the next step. So we're gonna start simmering the oats now until they become plump and the inside will almost turn translucent. If a couple start bursting, that's generally a sign you're good to go. There's no set time here as it's kinda of gonna depend on the heat you start out with and how big or thick your pot is, how many oats you have in there, what the frickin' mineral content of your water looks like. So generally I would say it kind of falls between 30 and 45 minutes, but the way we're gonna tell if our oats are finished is we're gonna pull a couple of them out periodically and we're gonna peel them in half. You wanna make sure that the inside doesn't look white or chalky. You want it, like I said, to start to turn translucent and it should be like, uh, like squishy almost. Once they're translucent, you don't have any more of that white center and maybe a couple of them start to burst, we're gonna strain them. Before we put our oats in bags, we want the inside to be moist, but we want the outside to be dry. So I picked up this little screen from Home Depot for like eight bucks. I do this outdoors since I have a lot of oats in each batch. But if you're doing smaller batches or maybe you have like a big colander, I think is what they call it, uh, you might be able to just strain yours right in the sink. Generally it takes my oats a couple hours to dry and I'll stir them every 20 or 30 minutes just because the bottom ones stay more wet and the top ones naturally dry. So just mix them up, let the wet stuff dry and the dry stuff wet. So the test to tell when these are ready is you take a paper towel, we're gonna drop that right on top of the oats, and then we're gonna drop some more oats right on top of that. Leave it for about 15 or 20 seconds and then remove the paper towel. If there's a couple like faint wet spots, we're good to go. If the paper towel is absolutely soaked, we need more time. So fortunately, I just have a couple faint wet spots here, so we are good to go. So I'm gonna start bagging these up. We don't need to be stressed about any sterility yet. 
just scoop the oats into the bags and try to make them even-ish. Naturally fill the bags based off of the capacity of your pressure cooker and how many oats you have. This full pot gets me about 10 pounds worth of hydrated oats, so I like to do four two and a half pound bags. I could just as easily do two five pound bags or five two pound bags. It doesn't matter, split it up however you want. I feel like the, the smaller the bag, the more it's spread out, the more potential for you know, should one of those get contaminated, I can toss it and salvage the others. So I generally like the two and a half pound mark, but I mean, if you wanna go do five pound bags, have at it. Now, once we have our bags all full, we're going to get to the sealing portion. This is a hotly contested topic. I've seen a lot of people online say that sealing your bag before sterilizing will cause the bag to rip or rupture because air can't, escape or do something I don't know and I don't think that that's the case at all I always seal my bags before putting them in the pressure cooker and it's worked out just fine for me but I do think there's a mistake people make that leads to their bags ripping and I'll get into that in just a second so I use this simple sealer that I got off of Amazon it's like 20 bucks I set it to power level four and it takes two seconds and we're good to go after sealing, you just want to kind of lift the bag gingerly. Don't pull it sideways or which way, just slowly like peel it up. The bag is going to be hot and it just kind of melted together. So if you just pull it off to the side, it's just going to tear that freshly made seal. Once sealed, we're going to squeeze the air out slowly. If you want to try to squeeze the air out before sealing, that's fine too. Air, I just feel like has a way of working its way back inside the bag while I'm trying to seal. So. That's why I normally do this step after sealing. I'm gonna put my adhesive injection port on the bag just above the grain. This keeps your syringe from jamming up with debris when you inoculate the bag. Then we're gonna roll the bag with the vent facing outward and place the bag into the pressure cooker. Honestly, the bags might be fine with the vent facing inward too. This is just how I've always done it. Don't forget to put water in the bottom of your pressure cooker. My pressure cooker requires three liters in the bottom Yours may be different. I would check your manufacturer's recommendations. We don't want our bags sitting in that water, so I elevate the platform a little bit. My pressure cooker came with these little trivets, these like platforms. I took three pieces of aluminum foil and created these little foil balls to sort of elevate that trivet so that my spawn bags can sit on top of this and out of the water. Now for sterilization. We wanna crank up the heat while leaving the pressure valve completely open. Once you get 10 minutes of steady steam, we're good to close the valve. Keep in mind, it's gonna take a few minutes to really get steam coming through the valve. And even once steam is coming through, it's gonna be inconsistent. It'll be like spurts. It'll go for a second or two, and then it'll completely stop for a half second. And that's the pressure cooker pushing out air and filling the space with more steam. We wanna make sure that we do not skip this part because it's very important. If we have pockets of air in there, the bags may not get to the temperature that we need to sterilize and you could end up with contamination. So just make sure you leave that valve open, get a steady stream of steam for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna close the valve and let the pressure start building. So keep your pressure cooker under some good heat while the pressure builds up to 15 PSI. Only once we reach 15 PSI do we start a 90 minute timer. That's how long these spawn bags need to fully sterilize. If you heated your pressure cooker up on high heat, you probably don't need it on high heat anymore to maintain the pressure. So go ahead and bring that down a little bit, but not too low such that you start losing pressure. This will be a little bit of trial and error finding that sweet spot on your stovetop. For my specific burner, that sweet spot is like one and a quarter uh, power or flame level. I don't know, whatever that means, I don't know. After your 90 minutes is up, go ahead and turn off the heat and leave your pressure cooker alone. Don't try to open the valve. Don't move it. Don't look at it. Don't even think about it. We're gonna let the pressure cooker cool and depressurize all on its own. I think this is the part where people who have sealed their bags end up tearing them. So what happens is they don't let the bags cool in the pressure cooker. They remove that lid and a bunch of cool air rushes in and around the super hot bags. This causes the bags to try to contract over the grains and they're already heated, making the plastic more like prone to stretching. And so as this thing tries to like constrict around the grains, it ends up tearing. 
So this is where you have to be patient. We're gonna let the pressure cooker cool overnight. Literally give it like eight, nine hours. And when you take your bags out in the morning, they're probably still gonna be slightly warm, but they'll be safe to remove at that point. Our tire risk is pretty much gone. And in the morning we pull them out and we have our perfectly sterilized bags just ready for inoculation. Before you go injecting any of your spores, your liquid culture, make sure the bags are room temperature and not warm to the touch because otherwise you run the risk of killing your mycelium. And that's all she wrote. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will see you next time. Happy growing.